Yes, he is in fact Robert Powell, who's about to go on stage at the Festival Theatre in Edinburgh. He dropped into the Fountain Bridge show earlier to tell us all about it. Robert Powell, a very warm, or is it a very cold and wet welcome to Edinburgh? <laughs> it all came as a bit of a shock when I stepped out of Waverley Station yesterday into this sleet and drizzle and five or six degrees, having come from, from 12 or 15 degrees in London. It's just summertime. <laughs> and what this is? <laughs> yeah. So in Edinburgh. <laughs> what so. brings you here? What brings me here is a play. A play which at the, at the Festival Theatre we're doing King Charles III. And it, when I say this to various people, they go, King Charles III? And I said, think about it. And they go, was he beheaded? And I go, <laughs> think about it. And they go, oh. Oh, and then the penny drops. And see those who are still thinking about it and don't know the answer. Can you tell us the answer? No. The answer is, is the story is about the ascension of uh, uh, current Prince Charles to the throne after his uh, mother's death. Uh, so the Queen is dead and Charles takes the throne and mayhem ensues. Oh gosh, well it certainly sounds very powerful. Let's have a quick look at the play that you're talking about. Oh no, again it is the same beshrouded lady walking through the walls. You play the part of Prince Charles. You don't look very happy about being king. <laughs> He's not. Well, his mum's just died. It, exactly. Is it a bit bittersweet? Because it, it, it's it quite is. emotional. He, he is, particularly at the beginning, you, you do get the impression that, that he, he, as he says himself, I am better thoughtful prince than king. Right. Potential holds appeal since in its castle walls one is protected from the awful shame of failure. And that is his attitude at the beginning. To make his mark, he does something that is very rarely done, which is he refuses to pass a bill. Um, <clears throat> but in the, for, it's exactly the right bill not to pass. Um, but it creates uh, a, a, an escalating mayhem with the government and uh, it ends in a constitutional crisis. It, it is very dramatic. It's also very funny, I have to say. There are huge tracts of, uh, of laughter in it. Have you met Prince Charles? I, I know him, yeah. Oh, you know him? Mm. Oh! And did you speak to him before no. taking on this role? <laughs> no. no. Well, so he's no. not aware that you've taken on this role? No, he, he probably is. <laughs> <laughs> but he hasn't said anything. Um, and I don't actually play it like that, because this was a, one of the other things, too, when I was offered the part. I said, you know, do you want... And then he said, no, no, we don't want an impersonation, uh, for obvious reasons. Well, you sound good. Yeah, brilliant. I know, no, I can do it, but we, we don't want that because right. the audience just then start to think of it as being a caricature, and, and a, uh, which it isn't. So none of us do the impersonation, but what I do do is I nod to, to Charles purely and simply by the... the, the oh, the, the pinky the, ring. With the pinky ring. And, uh, and every now and again, I, I overstress certain words, which is what is a little... Ver verbal tick that Charles has, but no, he's a he's such a lovely bloke. I, he really is. I mean, I'm not just saying that. I, I, we know each other socially because we're members of the same club. What um, does he like to drink? What does he like to drink? Yeah. Well, I w would imagine. I you know something. I'm not sure because we we on the occasions I've been with him, I think he probably he does drink wine uh, certainly. Um, but, but on other occasions, he, you know, when we've got a charity thing for the Prince's Trust, he, he doesn't drink at all. Right. So tell us about the play, because it's won an award recently for Best Play. Tell us about that, mm. and what makes it so good? It's a, it is extraordinarily writ written. It is a, it is a, it's a mini masterpiece. Michael Billington has just done a list of the 101 best plays of all time. And the 101st is, is this. Yeah. I mean, so you're going back to well Euripides and yeah. Aristophanes okay. and whatever. And, and so this is in. It is, and the audience say this too, that, that they have, you know, there are monarchists and there are republicans. And everybody has their own take before they go into the show. They don't know what to expect. And the story unfolds. 
And last night I was talking to, to, to people who'd just seen the show and they said, you know, you, you, you go, yes, no, that's right. Oh, I changed my mind because he's absolutely right. And then in the next scene, you see another take on the same thing and they go, no, that's right. And it's the brilliance <laughs> of the writing that everybody in it, the politicians and Charles, Charles is virtually alone. Uh, against the government. Um, a couple more questions for you before you go, Robert. Do you feel, in a word, under pressure doing this role because of the, the, the success surrounding it? No. You don't? Not at all. Second thing. question for you. Who did you prefer to play, Jesus or Prince Charles? <laughs> or in Holby City, a doctor. <laughs> okay. You got it. That one is playing Mark Williams was the, by far the easiest. Um, the, 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 the problems that go with playing Christ or playing Charles, they're not similar, but they're not dissimilar. Um, they're tough. And where can people see you? At the Festival Theatre. And, um, and it, I, I've got to say, it, we've never had any disappointed people there. They all get quite lively at the end and shout and whoop and Brilliant. cheer. Well, we're looking forward to it. Looking Thank you so it, much Robert. for coming in. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Jesus of Nazareth and Prince Charles in the room. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, he's a lovely man, wasn't he? He was lovely. Hayley liked the way he smelt. We did. He smelt of like lime basil, mahogany and chivalry. <laughs> it was just amazing. Anyway, it's time to see what roving reporter George is up to tonight. George? <laughs>